Uh, the nerds have already vetoed, they have already hosted, so they are ready whenever I sell them uh, that they can go. And for my part, we are good to go. Vindicta, uh, no stranger to the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. Poppy maybe played once, I think. I even had Vindicta in the main event once against the Maga. That was a, a very fun first game. Game 2 and Game 3 weren't that close. Vindicta was just a bit too powerful. But last time I had Vindicta around, I know that he did not win, so... I wanted to give him some love. He uh, dropped out in the group stage of ESL Masters NA. I was a bit surprised by that. I would have always picked Vindicta to make at least top 8 in the region. Unfortunately, it did not work out for a young man from San Diego. So I decided to give him something else to get excited over. And that is a chance to win 100 bucks. 100 bucks for the winner in the co-main event. 25 bucks for the loser. Let's go ahead and see who is going to come out on top. I've got honestly no idea between these two. I think it's very close on paper. Let's hope it's actually close in the games as well. Time for some of that warm up beer because Paddy Mac is heating up. <laughs> Wrong copy paste, uh, copy pasta there. What happened in the first game, by the way, guys? How did Elaser beat Clem? If somebody can give me a very quick summary, because I'm surprised by that one. Enjoy! Third best of five tonight. I had two best of sevens, now a third best of five. It's another long day at the office, but getting used to it, and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. In the bottom right side of Gresvon, we are looking at the main base of the man that is representing the Platinum Heroes. The Platinum Heroes, by the way, cannot complain about the amount of love I've given their team lately. This is Vindicta, the lover of Mamacitas. Trying to make San Diego, California proud. In the top left side of Zerka Esports, we are looking at the main base of a Polish Protoss. And it's not Gerald or Mana or Christiana or Art or Rodzin. This is Papi. I met Papi at the most recent IM Katowice. I'd never met him before in real life, so that was the first time. And it was kind of cute. He's like, hey. I was like, hey. I was like, do you know who I am? I was like, no. He's like, you said you invite me. I was like, oh, and it turned out to be Poppy. And then I shared a little story with him about how he made me mold one time. Because there was a day that I came back from a American esports event. I don't know which one it was. So I was a bit out of shape. I was like, all right, let's have a day of ladder. Let's play some games. And I played freaking seven games in a row against Poppy, and I lost all seven. And I was not a happy chappy that day. <laughs> Hello, ZJ. Yeah, I think uh, game three between Paddy Mac and Night Phoenix was fun. Uh, Multi-series was pretty fun. I think the first game between Paddy Mac and uh, Night Phoenix was pretty cool as well. Even though it ended a little bit earlier than I think it should have ended. Yeah. I'm not disappointed. No absolute certified bangers yet. But maybe we're going to get these in either this best of five or the next one. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, the Crusher man for giving me his prime. I appreciate it, mate. Twitch prime is not a crime, guys. It is not a crime. It is encouraged, even. You get you get virtual hugs and love from me. Papi is going to open uh, things up with a Stargate in the very first game. As Vindicta is going for an interesting opening where it's Marine into Double Reaper. This is not very standard. It can f find a lot of success early on. If the first adapt just shades to the other side of the map and the Reapers avoid it. It's an interesting build. Three racks. But not the three racks that we are super used to. Three racks with two Reapers. Well, I do expect them. I expect them now. And I actually think that uh, for Jumi against Namshar. I actually think stylistically that should be a very fun series. Not something that I've seen in a very long time, if ever. But if I just think of how Jumi likes to play and how Nemshar likes to play. And the current skill level that those guys have. I think we'll get some good PVCs there. Mm. Adapt of Papi making it to the other side of the map. He's not going to see a whole lot. Oracle halfway done. This is when the Reapers are going to show up. And as I said earlier, guys, two Reapers, if you're out of position... They can really cause a lot of pain very quickly. All right, there's one more adept. Poppy is not a greedy boy going for triple adept. As a Protoss, I always kind of hate the idea of making three adepts because 
you feel like those are units that don't scale very well into the mid game as poppy does get an scv for his troubles on the other side of the map but yeah there are moments where you absolutely need triple adapt and maybe this was sort of one of them because only one adapt at home would have been hard to deal with two reapers but more importantly uh scenarios of you know a three rex or just a couple of marines very early on being a nuisance now the Oracle flies in, activates Pulsar Beam, forces all the SCVs to move. So Vindicta's economy takes a serious hit here. Sure, he didn't lose too many SCVs, but it's, I always find it so painful if I'm forced to pull all my workers this early in the game. You really feel that. And whatever timings you had in mind, whatever build you were going for, even if it's just for five seconds, whoa, as the Oracle flies into a lot of Marines. But good save by Poppy. Drops the revelation is confident that he can drop a nexus it's a decent amount of guys with a gun guys i uh, feel like you kind of have to respect this it's a little bit risky what vindicta is doing because he didn't necessarily know if there was another oracle barely had any anti in the main base and this is gonna hit hard this army is gonna struggle i think this nexus is gonna get cancelled i don't think that poppy really has to worry about losing his army or losing the natural but this nexus I think this Nexus is in trouble. Stim is done in five seconds and we can stim forward immediately. This Protoss army just doesn't micro very well. I'd love to see a stim. I want to see a stim. We get the stim. We get a cancel on the Nexus. We're going to get one Oracle. The second Oracle takes damage. Sentry dies. Adepts die. Ah, that was a good move up. Sure, these Marines are in a bit of a pickle and most likely at least one of them will die. If not all of them. I, uh... I rarely see this strategy lose, guys. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see it lose this time around. It's a good start for Vindicta. Despite the fact that the initial opening was a little bit painful. The Oracle flying into the main base. You have to go to Schiphol. What are you going to do in Schiphol, mate? You going on a holiday or what? Where are you going, mate? What's on the agenda? Or are you just delivering chocolate? <laughs> This is a lot of bio. Without a Colossus, this is going to be so hard to deal with this. Picking up a friend and staying over. You are a sweet man if you drive from Belgium to uh, Schiphol to pick up someone. Something that I've done many times in my life as well. And at one point, I started to regret it a little. I was like, why is everybody using me as taxi chauffeur? So I assume he's a very good mate. A seven worker advantage on the side of Poppy as he's heading into Colossus and then Blink Stalkers. Which is obviously what we know and kind of uh, expect in this matchup. Vindicta is just now working on his transitions, getting some Metavex out. So he has some more mobility. He's dropping a third CC on location. That makes sense. Because with the way that Poppy has played it, he doesn't have to worry about quick zealots. There isn't really anything that can get a random cancel on this, so... Why build it in the main if you can build it on location? Hmm. This Protoss army does suddenly look a whole lot more intimidating than it did a while ago. These uh, Polish Protosses, they really have some solid macro. I always feel that they lose an amount of units where I think it's almost game over. And then you blink twice and they've got three bases saturated, a Forge, Colossus, Immortals. Good scan there by Vindicta as he spots the Observer. Vindicta prioritizing a ghost over Vikings here, I think. I'm not sure if I totally feel that order. I actually think that maybe a second starport before ghost production here would have been better. Who won the second game, by the way, guys, between uh, Clem and Laser? I, s I assume Clem won. I saw they were both maxed out, but I missed the last bit of it. What? Laser is 2 and 0? Oh, no. So Clem is one map away from being eliminated of the tournament that he always wins? Damn. I thought that he struggled with Wayne uh, just because he was playing the Kung Fu Cup and obviously playing a tournament for 5-6 hours can be very mentally draining. I honestly thought that Clem would be an overwhelming favorite against Elaze. Damn. These Polish doors are just popping off. It ain't over till it's over. There's always a chance. 
that Clem goes Super Saiyan like he's done many times in the past. Don't forget last time around three McMasters. Rainer had a 3-0 lead over Clem and Clem still turned it around and won the tournament 4-3. That is shocking to me, man. I'm gonna put my phone on my stream deck and I hope it doesn't activate random buttons. As these two had an explosive opening, but now we are just macroing. There isn't really anything uh, too crazy happening. I think we had a tiny Widow Mine drop in the natural that I kind of missed, but no biggie. This is uh, an Audi Mactosis pylon, by the way. I would like to see one more pylon. If we're powering a robo, a gateway, and two batteries, I think one more pylon doesn't hurt, does it? Hmm. Yeah, Vindicta never really shies away from uh, the late game, as he doesn't be careful here. Couple zealots. I thought it was more. I thought he put meta. I thought he put bio units inside of the medevac, and stalkers were going to blink. I mean, Poppy is also just truly embracing the macro game with the double forts, the double robo, now even the templar archives, four base setup. At least they are not rushing things. Mm -hmm. One more scouting marine gets picked off. Vindicta just kind of scattered a couple of units around the map to give himself some map vision as he sets up another Widow Mine drop. They are permanently cloaked, but it's cannon. Minus nine probes, though. Minus nine probes. Make it ten. That is good. He's very good. Yeah, Poppy does need to get on top of his uh, economy. Just playing ultra late game PvT with only 65 probes. Sure, we have three three upgrades, a million gateways, a million bases and stargates, and we are maxed out and we have a bank. Then I'm okay with 69 probes. But if we are not even maxed out and we have one more upgrade, and EMP on the center is would be nice, and that's exactly what we get. Good Nova there, though. As a couple of goals did go down to our very first disruptive shot. Uh, I like the army of Vindicta, to be fair. I really think there is a lot of potential. Maybe we want to buy uh, some time and wait for the 2-2 two -two upgrades to kick in. Plus one for the Vikings as well. As another Ghost does get picked off. First game is on the European server. The second game will be on the American server. And then we'll just alternate back and forth. Vindicta so loads up four Manifacts. Flies over an Observer. Ooh, does he... See? He barely missed that. That is awfully it's close, but he missed that one. Completed. Now there are a couple of zealots as the armies are gonna look at each other once more. Nova set us for a widow mine and a sensor tower. A missile turret. Could we chase this army? The EMP misses. I thought Cuckoo was the only Terran player out there that would miss EMPs on this level. But I guess enhanced shockwaves is out of the game, so it's slightly more acceptable now. It's still big though. Disruptors! We're gonna pull a Cuckoo! We're gonna snipe two out of three! The third one does get a big fat explosion though in the heart of the Terran army. As there are more Zealots trying to take out a bunker, but the big Gabriel bunker stands as strong. Big Gabriel did not have stunt in the monsters, but Gabriel his bunkers and the influence on this matchup will live on. The upgrade is removed because of Ruddy, no cap. <laughs> uh, I do not have that power, mate, to remove upgrades. If I did sense the towers, it would have been eliminated a long time ago. I know that's not an upgrade, but I would have definitely taken care of that. The bunker will finally fall against the entire army of the Protoss. The entire... Oh, what? Okay. The entire army of the Terran is running into some storms. Vindicta not quite getting the same cleanup as uh, our Protoss did. Now, Vindicta does have another army in the bottom left side, so it is two bases for the price of one, as now a Rico has been used. At the triangle, Vindicta needs to disengage. Probably eager to get one volley over the Vikings, but I wouldn't even do it. No, Sensor Towers do not see Dark Templars. Only if there is a missile turret around them. This army is in a bit of a pickle, guys. Disrupt is coming in from the bottom as well. That's a very good zoning. A decent split, decent crisis management there. And in the end, Vindicta at least gets a couple of them. But needless to say, a lot of buy units did bite into the dust. Or fell. Another one. Bites the dust. Oh, makes sense. That is a song. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Poppy's economy took a serious hit by losing not one but two bases. 
And he's once more so eager to attack it. This time around Vindictor setting up the surround. Keep an eye on the minimap. As the Vikings will get some good shots off. Disruptors are exposed. Marines and Marauders coming in from the top left side as well. The Novas and the Storms are good. But I still think the Terran army will reign supreme. This is a picture perfect engagement by Vindicta. And he will in the end wipe the floor with the entire Protoss army. There are a couple of DTs being uh, proper annoying. And they do have Shadow Stride, so they can blink all over the place, but... What a fight there, guys, by Miguel Vindicta. That's the surround that he was looking for. Papi just kept on running into this area. And it's just so hard to fight here. If there are Widow Mines, Mr. It's Planetary Fortresses, but he kept on trying. Did not expect to get surrounded. Well, we even have the Medivac speed upgrade, guys. A rapid... Reignite systems? Something like that? <laughs> it's a hard name. We'll keep an eye on it. DTs are going to blink away. They know they cannot take that fight. Obviously, Vindicta should do something with the big old army supply lead that he has created for himself. There are a lot of high Templars, but one EMP, guys! <laughs> uh, Vindicta ain't no cuckoo. As he lands another EMP, he drains all these high Templars from their energy. Now Vindicta with the trademark double liberator advanced ballistics harass. Setting one up at the 9 o'clock base. Ooh, thanks. A couple big shots off on Nova does fly forward. I don't see a way for a puppy to win this fight unless he really gets the biggest Novas out there. Vindicta loves a rapid reignition system. I was very close. I said reignite. Reignition. Reminds me of an R. Kelly song. It is the remix to Ignition. It's also a lot of Novas flying forward. This is the Vikings just went in super deep. Vindicta obviously needs to still be careful. Always respect the defensive reinforcements. Always respect the disruptors. But eventually Poppy is just running out of splash damage here. And 3-3 Bio does not care. Just like the Honey Budger doesn't give a damn. 3-3 Bio doesn't really give a damn. Vindicta is awfully close to taking the 1-0 lead. One more good fight is all it takes. And this is that good fight that he was looking for. Papi with some sloppy micro there towards the end, but I don't think it would have really changed anything. GG gets called a 1-0 lead for Vindicta, and this was played on the European server. You listen to R. Kelly when I was in high school. So basically a couple of years ago, you know. Now in this day and age, I do not listen to R. Kelly. Not just because I fell out of love with the music, but I also fell out of love with him. I think that goes without saying. Um, so we switch over to the American server for a game two. I think these guys will just do the hosting for me. Fun first game, very macro-oriented. Explosive start, slow mid-game, and things were heating up. I think obviously the game deciding moment was the entire army getting surrounded in the top right side. Uh, it was just a beautiful engagement by Vindicta. He saw an opportunity, he went for it. And Papi just kind of walks straight into the trap. Yeah, I know, Sybil. I'm stunned by it, mate. I'm stunned. I've got the game open. I'm obviously a StarCraft nerd and I'm a StarCraft fan. So, I'm not watching just because I have to cast this weekend. I'm also just, you know, invested in these games. And I, uh, if you guys would have asked me before that, what do you think is going to happen, Ronnie? I said 3 Clan. Well, I didn't say it, but that's what I would have said. No. Yeah. There are always people that afterwards are like, Oh yeah, I really thought Elaze was going to win that series. Well, I think you're crazy if you thought Elaze was going to win this series. But Clem definitely in some trouble right now. We'll keep, a, we'll keep an eye on Game 3. As they are on Grass 1, we are loading into Babylon. So that's scary for Poppy, guys, because not only is uh, Babylon a good map for Terran, this is also played on the American server, and he's down 0-1. My favorite Vindicta on this one. <laughs> Round two, fight! In the bottom right side of Babylon, we are looking at the main base of the man that is uh, representing the Platinum Heroes. This is the man. And representing all the Mamacitas as well. Hailing from San Diego, California. Our reigning, defending, all-time favorite American Terran player. Sorry, Future, I love you too. This is Vindicta. Still shocked that Miguel did not make it into the playoffs. 
I did not get to catch all of his games in the ESL Masters Regionals, but I uh, did not see that one coming, guys. I feel like he's more active than ever before. He's playing a lot. I thought he was in good shape. In the top left side, we are looking at the main base. The man who is trying to continue the streak of Polish Prolos players in the big brain bouts. That is brought to you by Basilisk. We had Rodzin and Art getting W's on the board. Let's see if he can start turning things around to continue that streak. This is Poppy. Yep, Eleza does have that uh, tournament, right? Once a year, once every two years, where he's suddenly just a whole lot better than we think he is. I know he's done it a couple of times before, so you can say in that regard it shouldn't be surprising, but with everything that I have seen over the last few months, I would have never, ever, ever predicted Elaze to defeat Clem in the Masters. Now, obviously, they're not there yet, and I think Clem is looking pretty good in Game 3, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Be a, a very big upset. It's funny as well, right? Because obviously the winner of that series will go up against our very own Cerro. And I'm sure that Cerro will think like, okay, Clem is better than Elaser. But then again, Elaser in ZVZ is... Uh, if you talk about hit or miss, Elaser ZVZ is probably like the most hit or miss thing in history. If you already know he's going to make it weird. He's going to do crazy stuff. Where Lambo has obviously mind games and a very methodical approach. Elasers is going to try to make it the wildest and sloppiest and messiest series ever. Where nothing seems or nothing is what it seems like. Yeah, that could be a scary one for Sarah too, but uh, we'll see. I still believe that Clem can turn that around. But we'll keep a little eye on it. We see that Poppy has a good wall off, and this uh, Reaper is not going to be able to get in, but maybe with a grenade. Ah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. You would have just bounced yourself into the Adept, and then you would have died immediately. Vindicta will go Barracks, Expand, Factory, Barracks. So it could potentially be a third Barracks as well before the starport even goes down. I have to admit that this was a weekend that I was ultra pumped for, where I was like, Ooh, IndyCar, Formula 1, uh, Masters uh, playoffs, and I was like, maybe the exciting final week for Feyenoord, but that already all happened. Then the Grand Prix got cancelled, and now suddenly I have a lot less things to get excited over. But at least still a great weekend of StarCraft, and I'm going to try to enjoy the Indy 500 for the first time in my life. Uh, that has been done before, uh, Sybil. He, he actually did that before once on a very sick moment, deep into the main base of a Zerg. And I remember that the, the casters who were casting it back then, they were like, Oh, Sarah, with a mistake! But it was actually a perfect grenade, because it spread out his own army, and it made it a hard, lot harder for the Banelings to connect with multiple units. So Sir, our Clem has definitely done that before. So with Clem, you can assume that it's on purpose, mate. If it worked out well, probably on purpose. <laughs> Steam on the way, and the third barracks that I was hinting towards earlier in this game has also been planted down. So I don't know if Indicta wants to wait for a long time. Sometimes I see this opening and then the Terran just kind of stays at home forever. Just get a crap ton of bio and they wait until they drop a starport and they take it from there. This opening is pretty good against the 4 gate blink stalker. So maybe that's something Indicta was uh, wary of and he was worried about. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to try to get as many battle units out as possible and a couple of tanks out early. Uh, if it's not the case, obviously this map is fantastic for tanks. Because of all these rocks and mountains and side blockers in the center of the map. There really is no better tank map at the moment than this one. As Poppy is just uh, trying to get some map vision. And trying to see if he needs to shave off some marines. If there is a move out. I am keeping my eye on that clam against the laser series too. And even this game seems very close and competitive. It's nice though. Nice for uh, the casters. Like, you never want to see a 3-0. But if it's a 3-0 for the underdog, that is ultra hype. Like, 3-0s for favorites are not that hype, right? It's just favorites doing favorite things. But like, if Elaza wins this 3-0, that still would be a remarkable series. And one that you'll think about for a long time. 
But I don't know if he's gonna do that or not. So far this game is awfully peaceful. Makes me wonder uh, how the weather is. Where you guys are living. Hopefully the sun is shining and you guys are getting ready for an exciting weekend. Whatever you may do. As we do have the stalkers now running into the natural. And finding a few SCVs over the first time. Probably is going to really push the issue a tiny bit. That's the refinery. Not a pick off you see very often. It is a pick off. Not ultra impactful, but obviously just killing anything in Stalker feels nice, right? As long as you don't lose any units and you know you've got one base more than your opponent, every pick off is one that counts. Sixty-one probes for Poppy against the forty-seven SCVs of Indicta. There is a third CC on the way, so I don't think these numbers are ultra drastic. Nice. Yeah, and Vindicta has been very good in spotting the observers today, guys. I was impressed by that one in the center of the map on Grass one. I think this one was not necessarily that easy, but he found this one immediately too. Last game we went for the Robo, the Robo Bay, Colossus, Immortals, Disruptors. There was obviously Storm, but there was Storm way later. It was kind of like one of these, okay, I'm rich moments and I can do whatever the hell I want. Make sure to wave at me as a J. Drive safe, mate. I hope you have a good journey. I don't know if you do this, by the way, as we have... Damn it, I can't talk about this right now. Just drive safe. I'll tell you later, another day. <laughs> I have a method for picking up people at Schiphol Airport. And it's the best way to do it. Things are going to see up very far away. Poppy feels that this is a fight he can take. I think he could have waited, but he wants to land some big old storms. And he dropped some big old storms. That is exactly why he ran forward. Did he have to run into tanks in the center of the map? Nope, he didn't. But he just said, hey, I know that I've macroed well. I know I was in three bases way quicker than you. And I've got Storm. You've got no ghost. This is where Storm shines the brightest. And those were some picture-perfect Storms. Vindicta supply is under a hundred, guys. That is kind of shocking to me. He lost uh, pretty much everything there. Poppy now feels that he should just immediately go again. We'll get the bunker. There are a couple of Archons in the back. There's one more Storm. <laughs> That's a lot of dead SCVs, Zealots, Adepts, Archons, Immortals going to town on the last few units of Vindicta. And after a nine minute game, everything gets tied up. So Vindicta wins on the European server and Grass 1. Poppy wins on the American server and Babylon. Uh, I, uh, I kind of feel like it should have been the other way around, but I like it. It really does go to show that it's not all about servers and it's not all about who plays on the, the better map. As it seems that Clem is going to win the third game at least. Don't count him out, guys. Never count Clem out. I don't know if uh, they are going to host. Yes, they will host. Game three is going to be played on altitude between these two. PvP on altitude. I don't hate it. What time is uh, ESL Masters America supposed to start tonight? Does someone know that? And if you guys have uh, Liquipedia open. What up, Campion? Great it, you know, great it. Then keep on weekend, uh, Santi Hattrick. So we can do some stats padding. I feel like the boys should try to make it happen. Get some penalties. Make it an even better year. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there is literally no downtime today between uh, Europe and NA. That sucks a little bit for us, but it is what it is. I don't go through all these things. All we can do is do our best and watch some fun games. Round three. Fight! In the bottom left side of Altitude, we are looking at the main base of our American Terror player representing the Platinum Heroes. Won on the European server, lost on the American. We're back in Europe. This is Vindicta. In the top right side of Altitude, we are looking at the main base of our Polish Protoss, trying to continue the reign of dominance of the Polish Protosses in the Bastille of Big Brain Belts. Rodzin won, one of the best best of fights we've ever had. Art won a relatively one-sided series against Baby Marine. Let's see how this man does in this week, the 26th edition, hailing from Poland. This is Poppy. Yeah, same here, same. That's why I mention it. 
Should be fun. I don't know if I'm casting on uh, Sunday afternoon or not. But I kind of like to watch the games on Sunday. It'd be cool. Yeah, and as soon as I'm done with these two best of fives, guys, I am definitely uh, waving the flag immediately. We've been live for 7 hours and 23 minutes, which obviously is a long time. I had two best of sevens in the WTL, played ladder for two hours, and I've got both Saturday and Sunday over at the ESL channel, so I'm gonna need to uh, charge up a little. 2 1 in Paddy Mac vs. Night Phoenix. Night Phoenix won 3 0. The first game was interesting, and well, we had a rather awkward GG timing. Maybe it was fine, maybe it wasn't, but I feel like whenever there is debate, it's never fine, right? Then you should always probably try. Third game was very exciting. It's probably the best game of the day so far. I actually enjoyed it. That one was very back and forth. Yo, air. Thank you so much, mate. Let's go. I have it disabled in the game, but I really appreciate it. I'll show it when I'm out of the game. I don't know. We love it. We love it. We wear it. No, no, no. I uh, did go to the city on Monday, Geert, but uh, I was on the other side, basically standing somewhere like Stadhuisplein. Well, not quite Stadhuisplein, obviously. Uh, yeah. Above the Koopgoot, basically. That's where I was standing. Very far away. <laughs> and I was there only for a little bit, because obviously on Monday I always have to cast the weekly, so I had to make sure that I was home on time. But I still enjoyed being there. It's always nice when the entire city is just happy and... People are nice and smiling and celebrating. Good vibes, good energy. What do we got here, guys? For Vindicta, it's a double refinery opening. It's a barracks and a factory. Power of this opening is a lot of map control early on with uh, Reapers and Hellions. Downside of this opening is that the Terran economy is gonna take a little longer to truly get up and running. And you also don't have too much NTR. Well, that's something that the Widow Mines are gonna try to take care of. In a perfect world, guys, for Vindicta, Poppy just releases his Oracle to the other side of the map, flies into the Widow Mine, and then the Reapers and Hellions can do a lot. But in a less perfect world, Vindicta does not find any damage with the Reaper Hellion opening. Oracles to stay at home, activate Pulsar Beam, zap, 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 zap. Let's see how good the Oracle movement is. Hellion is in the natural, so if you guys see probes die, it's because of the Hellion. Okay. I gotta say, good job though by Vindicta. Splitting up the Reapers the way he did. Does end up losing two out of three, but... Just, sometimes there's just not a whole lot more you can do. The Hellion got no probe kills, by the way. So, so far, it's minus three units for absolutely nothing. And unfortunately for Vindicta, the Oracle did not decide to fly into the main base. Honestly, Air, I think in the summer you would really like Rotterdam. Like if the sun is shining and you can just walk around and visit a couple of the sites and the parks. I think Rotterdam is a very cool city to uh, visit. And as the Oracle will activate, fills a beam. Unfortunately for Vindicta, there were no widow mine. Damn, 15 work deficit, guys, in a 5 minute game. I know Corona Boost, I know Protoss, but that is a lot, man. A 15 worker deficit is a little more than it's ever supposed to be. Vindicta not happy with how this is all played out. Two Widow Mines though, to potentially even it all up. One of the biggest problems of building a shield battery in your mineral line is that the probes clump up more. So if Widow Mines do burrow, you're going to lose way more probes than you normally do because the probes are already clumped up because of the shield battery. I feel like I was the OG one of starting this speech and now other casters are copying me. But it is the thing. <laughs> I experienced it first and stalkers are here as well. Vindicta can we unload only one and that is not good enough. The Phoenix even lifted the uh, Widow Mind there for a split second. Man, Vindicta needs to take the best fight ever here guys because if he doesn't he's just out. Uh, can we at least get the battery? Yes, okay, that's good. That is good. Vindicta needs to take an amazing trade and an amazing fight here because he is down 16 workers. He's down a base, but the Marines, the Cyclone, and Tank definitely doing their thing. The Stalkers don't have blinks, so these Stalkers are really not all that great. Eight Stalkers in Immortal and three Adepts, but the SCVs died. And if the SCVs died, that means that the bunkers won't finish up. 
Benicta is just settling for the Nexus. And he will get the Nexus, but uh, that obviously means that it was at the cost of his entire army. We did have a Liberator sieging up in the main base, getting five kills and a lot of lost mining time. Cool. No, I'd say that that was good enough, right? You don't just get a base. You get a whole bunch of probes and you force a lot of lost mining time in the main base. <laughs> Finicta was in a pretty dire position there, but yeah, that was a pretty cool move out. Nice execution as well. Cool decision to send the Liberator into the main base rather than to keep it with the army. And protect your marines and your uh, bunker, but... That honestly looked like this could have been a very one-sided affair, and instead... No, I'm like, yeah, I kind of like it for Vindicta. As the Liberator is still finding damage, now the Reaper is getting an extra kill. Man, this lip. It's an absolute MVP lip. Once more, all the probes were not able to mine. It is obviously going to die in the end. There's nothing that can really do anymore. Maybe we could have just let it seize up in the main base to force like two or three extra seconds of lost mining time, but... Those are the little things. Mm. Yeah, this game is rough for Vindictas. It, it was for a bit, but it is more than playable now. Hey, I even love it for him. Look at the timing of the Twilight. Look at the timing of the Forge. Obviously, the Colossus, that could be a problem, but... No, it's... Uh, this game went from 0 to 100 real quick for Vindicta. And from 100 to... 5 for puppy but altitude is a very big map there is still a lot to play for there is always a way to make sure that a game like this drags on for a little while maybe the oracle can get lucky maybe we can get a big stasis trap there is no anti-air in the main base so an oracle flying into the main base right now would have a lot of potential hmm. missile turret completes Triple tank and a raven chilling here for Vindicta. Obviously having a raven is so nice as well to spot the observers. It will make his life a lot easier and should make it very hard for Vindicta to... Or, uh, yeah, to, to make a bad play, to fly with medevacs over an observer. And it's harder for Poppy to really figure out where the moveouts are coming from. Because you need to position your observers a lot more defensively. Taking a little look at the beautiful game four that's happening as these two guys are just macroing their way through. Do we still believe in Clem, guys? You think Clem is going to get the job done? I think he will still do it. Down 0-2 or not. I think Clem is just making it a bit more epic. He's like, you know, I'm always winning this tournament. Let's go ahead and put on some drama into my run. I'll go behind against Wayne. I'll go behind against the laser. And we'll still bring it home. Hello, Zileta. How are you? We have the first few uh, ghosts on the way. Uh, so Papi is going to drop the second Robo. Obviously, all the things that could be so impactful in a 10-minute game, they are going to matter a whole lot less if the armies get bigger and the power unit number goes up. More Disruptors, more Colossus. Blink Stalkers, nice upgrades on the Stalker boys. We don't have stalk uh, Blink Stalkers yet. Mm-hmm. That is a, a very weird, shameless program make. <laughs> it's like, starts off with a hello and it's like, Hey guys, a Starcraft 2 shooter fan project in the work. I see colonies, Zork vs. Terran in testing. Go ahead and take a look at this YouTube channel. That is obviously not okay. You could have just asked me and be like, Hey Roddy, can I promote something? And I'd be like, yeah. But if you do it without asking, that is not very nice. <laughs> I would have not permabanned him, but... Maybe I'm too good for this world. He did this before too? Okay. Then I would have done the promo band. It's so silly because if people ask me, I feel like I've been helping out everyone that I could have helped out over the last 12 years. I've always raided people. I really don't mind promoting other streams. But it's weird if you do it without asking. This is so silly. Because you can ask me and it will all be easy. Anyway. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this potential big fight here in the co main event of the evening as obviously the action kind of slowed down for a little while after an explosive early game. We have Makrot. We've got the Liberators sieging up in the top side of the map. Vindicta and Liberators, man. I really feel like it's a proper iconic duo. 
I think he's very good with them. And he kind of just knows the moments to use them very well. It's weird that Poppy is this aggressive without Blink. It almost feels like he forgot that he doesn't have Blink yet. He fires it up now. Like, charge? Yeah, he's going to chrono boost it immediately. I think that makes sense. It's weird to uh, be maxed out. 12 minute game. Double Forge. No Blink. And with the way that this game started off, it made sense that he prioritized charge over Blink. I really didn't mind that decision, but... It is still important to uh, get it done. Things are going to siege up as the Marines are leading the charge here. The Nova had a lot of potential, but Vindicta shuts it down. <laughs> you, you need a lot of confidence there, guys, that you can get the kill on the Disruptor. Because you misjudge that and your game is over. A uh, beautiful fight there in the end by Vindicta. Poppy has 20 Zealots, I don't quite see them. A couple of them are waiting on the left side of the map. A couple of them are gonna run around the Zelnaga Watchtower. Woo, Colossus in a very weird spot. Raven does die though, with a lot of energy. That is a... Somewhat of a painful loss. Obviously we know how impactful Ravens can be. But this is still a terrifying Terran army. Terran firing, haha. <laughs> you guys get it? As Nova does fly forward. And Novas are also terrifying. As the first one gets a lot of bio units, the other one connects with a couple of tanks. Do we have an overcharge? Yes, we do have an overcharge. Without the overcharge, I would say this fight is a wash. With the overcharge, oh my goodness, Poppy. Poppy with a couple of picture perfect purification Novas and a nice overcharge will end up losing his base. But obviously he took a much better fight there than I think he had any business in taking. And now also imagine the Ravens surviving, right? And disabling the Disruptors or disabling the Colossus. Losing that Raven before all of that went down, I think, was a painful loss for Vindicta. As these Polish nerds, I'm telling you guys, they love to macro. Sure, we want to invite uh, Mana. And I think Mana can be a little bit more aggressive, but... The Arts, the Rodzins, the Christianes... Well, Christianes is aggro too. Gerald loves to macro though. Yeah. Uh, the Gabriel Bunker, and it's properly protected too. As this Liberator is going to fly straight over the Protoss army, that's a painful one. As Vindicta is still struggling to max out. Siege up your tanks, mate! Please, ASAP. As the Disruptors are going to try to go forward once more, they're going to soften up two tanks. The next Nova will get the double kill. There are a couple of Zealots running into the natural. Can we keep it together here, Vindicta? As another Liberator, man, ever since I said he was great with Liberators. Libs have just been dying random, uh, randomly all over the place. And the momentum has shifted once more all the way to the other side. This game looked fantastic for Poppy. Then it looked even better for Vindicta. And now 15 minutes in it does feel that we are one or two fights away from Poppy winning this game. Unless we can get the double kill on the disrupt there. One of the Novas did go off. Softened up the tanks. But you need two purification Novas to kill a tank. Yes, a couple of zealots do get deflected. Vindicta stabilizes. That looked very scary there for a second, but in the end, we dropped a couple of MPs. We seized up our tanks. We kept it together against the zealots running into the natural. <laughs> One meta back here with 3 HP. Just flying around on the right side of the map. The marines will hop out of it in the end. Nothing happens, but that looked funny. Now, all the Polish guys have truly impressed me with their ability to just transition, take extra bases. Like, they make it look easy, but these guys are playing at a very high level. Because we have a couple of big EMPs landing, though. Speaking of high level, Archons being popped like balloons there. One of the Colossus dying, too. And suddenly, Poppy's army is non-existent. <laughs> and there's a couple of Stalkers walk into the meat grinder. All right, momentum back in Vindicta's corner, guys. Feels like we have two boxes here just swinging for defenses, and... Both of them are landing a couple of very clean shots. As we now have a bunch of DTs. DTs are more problematic than Zealots are. As they blink forward as well, they're gonna take out the missile turret, but there was a scan. One DT does sneak deep into the main base, that becomes very annoying. DTs in the natural, DT in the main. This is a weird army, though, to be on the other side of the map with. It's so fragile. Like one EMP, or two EMPs, rather. And Marotta swimming forward. Poppy made, you gotta be careful. But he says, Roddy, I've got it. He fires the Novus forward. 
it's going to run a couple of additional zealots into the triangle bay and since we do have a drop as well on the top left side action has really picked up here in the co-main event of the evening these guys going for it they're battling enough to see it as i'm going to restart my phone quickly because my elaze against clem series uh, disappeared how is our clay mal doing i see dead zerg bodies hit the floor that's 2-2 two -two right there I still call it Clem, guys. When he was down 0-2 and game 3 looked close, don't forget that I called Clem. And I think I know what happened as well, but... <laughs> <laughs> as we have an arc on... A couple of nervous flying forward. Okay, this is exactly what I mentioned, by the way. A beautiful flank. EMPs will land and Vindicta with a very nice engagement. Like Poppy's army, it's too fragile there. It's it's just too many disruptors and a couple of armored units to be that deep against a man with EMPs and a man with that many body units. That's crazy to me. And Vindicta obviously was patient. He was looking for it. Now he needs to still be patient. And this time around, the Novos do connect in a much bigger way. Oh my god. These guys have basically knocked each other out two or three times. But because it was a double KO, they both had time to recover, and here we are. 18 minutes into game 3. 3-3 three, three finishing for the bio is obviously always big. Bio units fire so quick. These upgrade skill very well. Got an EMP lens on a couple of the stalkers. The zealots are leading the charge. The stalk is blinking forward. Get a few of the buy units, but that's about it. We have a command center finishing on the bottom right side. Ho 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 ho! Straight out of horror movies. There's a whole bunch of the Dark Templars <laughs> ran into buy units. It seemed that Poppy also got pretty close to a tank there. But it is once more a Polish Protoss nerd taking the army supply lead. We have a Liberator harassing in the top side of the map. I'm not going to say he's good with them, guys. Because every single time I say that he's good with them, we see them just fall. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I know, Jimmy. This game, it felt like it was one of these games that could have ended at minute 5. With the economic advantage that there was, but... Yeah, at this point, I would still say anybody's game. Because all of these bios are going to get cleaned up. That's a bit painful, but... Ooh, what? A stasis trap? From where? How? Which oracle? <laughs> That is a big stasis trap, guys, because otherwise, obviously, this Nexus would have died. And Oh, my goodness. Now, Vindicta is going to be ending up losing all these units as well. Man, that is insane. You don't often see a stasis trap 20 minutes into the game having that much impact. But it's either this army deals damage or this army deals damage. But because of a picture-perfect stasis, Poppy saves all of his bases. Vindicta loses all of his units. Uh, ambitious forward blink though. This is still planetary fortress, but he does get the tank. This is also a PF, but this one is less choky. And now you can be the one on the high ground. Nova's on the SCVs. <laughs> is this a moment though for the bio units? I don't know. There's still storm. There's still one more disruptor. Repair though, still doing its thing. This might be a good fight for Vindicta after all. If he can avoid the final few Nova's, as he does gun down a couple of these disruptors. Crazy fight. Was very well done as he's now just on the chase, man. And he's tagging every single disruptor. He's getting all of them. And all that's left is a couple of zealots and stalkers. The best fight near a planetary fortress that Vindicta could have possibly taken. Oh my goodness. Repair, guys. And the SCVs. It is one hell of a drug. That is insane. A game that looked like it was very close to over. As we still have Liberators, by the way, doing their thing. 13 kills. On the other side of the map. Man, what a fight for Vindicta. What a game. <laughs> Absolutely, what a silly game. Couple of DTs with Shadow Stride are gonna run into the triangle base of uh, Vindicta. And obviously these SCVs are uh, dead. I'll just blink away, mate. Let it go. A few more SCVs are dying. Army still flirting with one another as a revelation goes down. We have a little drop. Behind the mineral line of the third base. Pylon will fall, that's about it. Get the stock. No, nope, stocks cannot do anything. Ooh, drop here. Nice little pocket area to drop. Mate. This is so infuriating to play against, by the way. Oh, yeah, Phoenix does not get the final shot off. And now the Marines will still get unloaded. Phoenix still trying to get the final shot off. 
in the end one very unfortunate Billy did die inside of the medevac but a whole bunch of marines still make it in there this will get cleaned up but six probes obviously not bad decent value even on powering a couple gateways the DTs are waiting lurking in the shadows for another opportunity to make some magic happen one. Oh, nice pickup on the tank. I was like, that tank is gonna die. It does seem that in the bottom right side. Vindicta bleed it out or bled out a couple of units. 33 Marines and 6 girls, 2 tanks. The 6 disruptors obviously is the scariest thing in the army of Poppy. Stalk is linked forward. A tank on the high ground. Ooh, how are you gonna. How do you see it? Wait, what? How does he see it, guys? What? What am I missing? Ah! Oh, the watchtower! <laughs> Sick! Jesus! <laughs> what is the range on that thing? <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. I'm so confused there. As we have another no flying forward Vindicta coming in from the. Oh my goodness, coming in from every angle, but there's also a lot of splash damage. I don't know how this plays out. It comes down to the Novas, it comes down to the storms. A couple of these Novas are good. This Protoss army is still freaking stuck. In the end, a couple of stalkers make it out, but literally just four. <laughs> Sexy engagement all over again by Vindicta. But Poppy has been out expanding him. Poppy has been out macroing him. Units lost resource tap shows us that Vindicta has lost 11,000 resources less. Uh, he is just getting out mined. If Vindicta wins this game, it is a truly impressive and remarkable victory. I don't know if he realistically can though. How many probes have died in this game? 54 probes, 57 SCVs and 120 zealots against 180 marines and 29 disruptors. Alrighty. I see that Poppy is watching the ruddy stream every now and then on how to keep disruptors alive. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot. He's like, alright, I'm done with the disruptor. I'll go Colossus instead. Maybe we can land a couple of EMPs on the Nexus, but uh, the Protoss army is nearby. I like to split up on just a few units. I think you may as well. No need to commit with your entire army when you know the Protoss army is nearby. What's happening over here? It's that Phoenix, man. That Phoenix is underpaid. Underappreciated. I, I, I can actually... You know what? I'm in sync with that Phoenix. That's my spirit animal right there. Thing has been trying. Did it just get picked up? Don't tell me it died. No, that doesn't bode well for me. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a game! What a game, and what a big brain bout so far. I really cannot uh, be too disappointed about the games today. Obviously, we had a 3 0 in the PvP, but I don't know if I could realistically do uh, 17 of these kinds of games. <laughs> that would be a problem. Poppy's entire army is in the bottom right side of the map. There's a lot of bio units are chilling in the top left. The uh, unit's a little bit derpy there. Papi, the last time you were here, it did not end very well. He says, Roddy, I'm not traumatized. I can still do better. Lead line a good Nova there. And I think he wisely disengages. Liberate us. Justice reigns from above. And there really has been a lot of justice in this game. I think it's over in two to five minutes. I'm not sure if you're memeing or if you're serious. Vindicto setting up the surround comes down to EMPs. There is a storm available. There are some Novas. Oh, you need to pull the Cuckoo. No, he doesn't pull the Cuckoo. He splits. He's still splitting. One Nova does connect there in the end. I think the Colossi are a problem here. There are no Vikings. He's going to turn around and at least pick up that one. But the other two Colossus and all the Zealots, by the way. Zealots reinforcements, four days. Poppy, clearly some F2A moving based on the minimap movement. This pylon right here, guys, was king. Because it allowed him to warp in all those extra zealots. And since we F2A moved, we brought back over these zealots as well. Liberators is still harassing. This one gets shot down too. It was a beautiful engagement again by Vindicta. But Poppy was just kind of more prepared for it. He was anticipating it. He was waiting for it. And I think he handled that very well. We are uh, definitely going to enter the stage where at least 150 Zealots are going to die. But I think that we could very well end up with over 200 Zealots dying in this game. Oh, I like the Widow Mines, guys. No detection here. Permanently cloaked, boys. Nice. He actually gets one of them. 
And now we're retargeting. How much longer can we do it? Okay. Settles for a stalker in the end. Had to macro, had to do other stuff. I do think this win of mine will fire again before this cannon is done. I've learned that the hard way. And now a couple of these stalkers are going to be in trouble. Poppy's entire army is in the bottom right side. Needs to wipe in more units here. Stalkers shoot at the Nexus because they are worried that they do not get enough love here. Maybe the Viking can land. I don't know what this is all about. Zealots and stalkers battling with him. <laughs> this is an insane game. That wind of mine did not fly because the stalkers were there to deny the shot from going up. But Marines and Marauders are going to win the fight against the stalkers. Cannon goes down. Poppy now very pissed. And he's like, all right, mate. I had enough of this nonsense. He is just gonna go for it. This base is not as important as that base in the top left side though. Vindicta has his army spread up in a beautiful manner. We have planetary fortresses for days. Insane EMP. Insane EMP on I Templars. Marines Marauders come in from the left side. Vindicta. I actually think that Vindicta is gonna get another decent fight here. Right now he's down in army supply, guys, but don't get fooled by the blocks that Poppy got. Is that a Rico? No, right? Did I just see him Rico? No. Never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm cute coping. That was a decent engagement. It was well done by Poppy to uh, disengage from that. Because if he did not, he would have been in serious trouble. I see that Clem has won game five as well. Can we get a little round of applause for Roddy? It was it incorrect? I know Clem won. And I did predict the Clem victory, guys. Even when he was down 0-2. And I know exactly what happened. And Rainer knows it too. As a Widow Mine does fire on a couple of Zealots and DT. A friendly fire there. For anybody that has just joined the stream right now after realizing that there is going to be a bit of downtime, I have been watching an insane 29 minute game that had a few minutes of build up. And over the last 10 minutes, these two nerds have just been donating army after army after army to one another. Vindicta has been outmined, but has been just taking better fights. But Poppy is out expanding him. Right now we've got an army in the bottom right side, sniping that Nexus. We've got Bai and is winning the fight against the Zealots here in the top left. This Protoss army is going to at least get this Orbital and a whole bunch of SCVs. And now our the era of booming economies I think is finally over. From here on out we are struggling. Only two ghosts though. But only two ghosts is going to get difficult. Another Liberator has seized up and now the Liberator does get picked off. This Medivac carrying uh, a lot of supply. Three Marauders and two Marines is very low in HP. Just like in real life, you tell me, Dunko. It's never been harder, mate. But I'm not giving up. My mommy did not raise a quitter. In a couple of tough months, ain't nothing to me. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. This has been a mental game. Entering minute 30. There's a couple of DTs. Obviously, the DTs do have Shadow Stride. Just very casually passed by the Terran army. <laughs> Poppy is like, man, the last thing I want to do is kill the planetary fortress. Like, you really don't have to, man. That base is mad. not mind out. Vindicta has a couple of units on the right side. I just want to keep a close eye on this army. This is a terrifying Protoss army with a lot of splash damage. Maybe Vindicta should base straight, eh? Like, this is not a... No, don't run into this. Don't do it. I think you should base straight. Yeah. Way too much splash damage. Let's go ahead and base straight. There's a couple of Zealots ran into the gold base. We have now taken the gold. With the bugging Zelnaga Watchtower. is everybody's favorite. Like, I would have loved to see Vindicta just at least YOLO on this Nexus. And maybe on this one too. Because the other bases, they don't have any money left. Right. Vindicta is going to go for this base. Will there be a recall then? Yes, there is a recall. How big is it? It's pretty big. But now, can we jump on this army as the Widowmine gets a shot off on one of these units? Maybe Vindicta can hunt down this army or fight that army. Oh my goodness, what is happening? <laughs> who is surrounding who? Who is trapping who? Ghost could land an EMP. Land an EMP on the High Templar and the Disruptor. That's exactly what happens. The Nova and the Storm though still goes off. Protoss is bullshit. As another Nova comes in from downtown. And now I think the fight is too good. Oh, ho, 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 ho. too good for Poppy. Too much splash damage. Too many angles. Too many explosions. And after a 32-minute game, we've got Poppy taking the 2-1 lead. 
Holy smokes. Holy smokes. <laughs> what a game. Oh man, I wish that he would have got a, a, an easier cleanup on the left side of the army because then it, it still could have maybe gone either way. But obviously with the storm and the Nova going off, it gave a lot of time for the army on the top right side to sync up. Man, that was mental. That was mental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if these nerds need a break, but I personally would not mind a break. It's been a, it's been a long day and that was an incredibly intense game. But if they are good to go, then I will just be good to go. And I'll just take it easy the first few minutes. And that, we are going back to the American server now. That was on the European server. Game 4 is on the map that has delivered a lot of PVT bangers lately. And that's Ancient Cistern. I, I don't know if they need a break. Indy is taking a break from casting the ESL Masters. And he is just casually... Uh, I don't know if he wants to join or not. You want to join? I think ESL America is starting soon, so I assume that he wants to cover that. Uh, one sec, one sec, one sec. One sec, not sure if Indy wants to join. What a game. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I definitely did. Okay. Uh, there we go then. Mm. Uh, he says he's casting America, so... Uh, Alright, sorry. Go, go. Our players are ready. We're just going to go ahead and hop into game four. Vindicta versus Papi. Yes, the ESL Masters America is continuing soon as well. Who's playing in that today, guys? I guess we've got Future against Scarlet and... What is the... Is it Disc... Disc Master? No, that can't be. Or is it? Are those the matches? No, wait, uh, Disc Master was final day of the group stage, and Massa won, right? In the Clown Fiesta of a series. So Scarlet Future and what else? What am I forgetting? I'm forgetting the quarterfinals. Must be Massa against someone. Kalazur, yes. Round four. Fight! That makes sense. All right, a truly epic game three for the ages between these two video gamers on altitude. Uh, some of you guys in the chat already said it. That must have been exhausting. I cannot imagine having to play more games after a game like that and not requesting a break. If there was ever a good moment to ask for a break, I really think that was it. But these nerds are gaming and they just want to keep on going. In the bottom left side, Platinum Heroes hailing from San Diego, California. This is the lover of Mamacitas, Vindicta. And in the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who's trying to continue the reign of dominance of the Polish Protoss players. Rodzin won, Art won. Can he complete the hat trick for the PP? Yeah, guys, it's completely fine to talk about the PP here. We obviously mean the Polish Protoss. This is Papi. Also, PP. <laughs> Too many PPs around. What is Vindicta doing here with his SCV? Nothing. <coughs> I am uh, definitely pretty hungry. I was hoping to sneak in a dinner before the big brain bouts, but we didn't quite have time for that. And now we have been doing an eight hour day on a, a tiny chocolate biscuit. I'm gonna eat like a pig tonight. Shut up, Cuckoo. Alright, guys. Cuckoo will also be back in the big brain bouts in week 85 after that comment. So, uh, in exactly 61 weeks, we'll give Cuckoo another chance to show us how good he is. And potentially pick up a couple dollars. I'm excited for it, Cuckoo. See you in 2025. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hello, Jimmy. Trifax will fight him, yeah. If Cuckoo finally grows the you-know-what to, uh, to play Trifax. He's too afraid. I offered Trifax. Cuckoo was afraid. Alright, we have a bunker going up in the back of the natural puppy. Earlier today in uh, the WTL, we saw this bunker basically winning the game 
for a special against Maxet. Now, Poppy is better than Maxet. And Vindicta is not quite a special yet. He's very good, but not quite special. So I like this response already a whole lot more. Now, the two Reapers. But then we're going to repair it, by the way. Let's repair. We can repair. There is a Hellion as well on the other side of the map. The Hellion should just drive into the main base, I think, guys. The Hellion should not bother with this. Hellion should just drive into the main base. And that's where it becomes very hard. And especially if you're playing on the American server, this kind of stuff is a nightmare to deal with. I love this decision by Vindicta as he gets a couple of nice shots off, gets five probes already. And that bunker is still healthy. And an Oracle is not necessarily the best thing ever in killing a, uh, a bunker. Ooh, I love Vindicta's micro so far, guys. It's very sexy. We need an overcharge, man. I honestly think he needs overcharge. Uh, he wants to get the SUV. He does finally get the SUV. Okay, no overcharge, but the Adept does die. And Oracle, will it run out of energy? Yes. So that means that this uh, Reaper can potentially get one more probe. No. Cool start, though. Cool start and great execution by Vindicta. Phenomenal execution by him. As five probes in the end uh, died. Obviously, a lot of lost mining time. Oracle was not used for at all. Offensively, it was only used defensively. Very solid. Very, very, very solid for Vindicta. The only thing that could make it better is this Oracle flying into the Widow Mine. And we all know that Oracles, guys, are great. For flying into Widow Mines. There is nothing that an Oracle is better at than flying into Widow Mines. Not quite. But there is a Marine Drop that has some potential. We have two Stalkers and an Adept. Obviously, the Stalkers do not have Blink. No, go for the main. You know there is a battery here. I did not like that decision. Since he knew that there was a shield battery in the natural, but there is no battery in the main base. And this amount of marines without steam or upgrades, this can't really battle near a battery, but obviously in the main they would have had a lot of potential. Yeah. When are the best days to try in 1v1 you? Basically any time that I'm playing ladder. Uh, every day that I stream StarCraft, I do play. Just not for a very long time. So if you see me play a ladder, you can always ask me. Obviously, once I'm casting a tournament, then I cannot do it. But the specific day does not matter. So if you ever see me play StarCraft, you can ask and we make it happen. What's your MMR Mustang? Who am I getting challenged by? Am I really this washed up that people are not challenging me? <laughs> <laughs> Should I be intimidated or being humiliated on my own stream? Mm. I know that the glory days are behind me, but... Can't just be a low master or a diamond nerd and challenge me and think you're gonna bob me. That ain't happening. <laughs> This game has slowed down a tiny bit. Obviously, at this point, uh, both of the guys just macroing, making all the usual decisions. The only maybe noteworthy thing is that just like in that other game on the altitude, that was very long, we go charge before blink, which I don't really hate. It's not necessarily the standard, but I don't think it's bad. If you are worried that the first push is going to be very hard to deal with, and that the Terran army will be better than your army. Yeah, go and charge before Blink is totally fine. No, not yet. I'm only Diamond, but when I get higher marks, I want to be able to challenge you. No way I play Toss. I do your Toss mech. <laughs> All right, mate. I look forward to it. Everyone is allowed to try, and everyone is allowed to win. But you don't get a bonus if you beat me. You already got my time with channel points. It's, this is not a... How do you call that? A, a, a fairground? Why can I think of a caramus? What is, what is a caramus in English? Is it a fairground? Maybe it is. As we have an interference matrix going down. The battery is not quite done yet. But the force fields are good. Marines and marauders doing their thing. Nice widow mine shot there, by the way. That's a whole lot of splash damage on this brother's army. 
And Vindicta is right now just counting down the seconds for Interference Matrix. It just lasts a little bit longer. The Raven is going to die. All the Stalkers have made their way over. The Nexus dies, but the Protoss army does stand strong. And more importantly, the Colossi survive. What do we have in the main base? We have a double Widowmind drop, Rico, but that's not going to prevent you from losing three probes. Four. That's good. Bonus probe. Mm, I was not quite thinking of Carnival or Circus. I was thinking about a theme park, but the theme park that they build up and break down and move around. That's, that's only there for a week. That's not quite the Carnival or the Circus. I think it's a fairground. No? Mm. Yeah, a Keramis, but a fair? See? Okay, then I was right. I know it's a Keramis, mate. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that I was struggling with. I was like, what is Karamas in English? A fair is correct. So no, you, you don't get a plushie or a stuffed animal if you defeat me in a 1v1, but you will get my time. I know that clam one. We've got a, another Winner Mind Drop heading towards the main base as these nerds still battling. Still competitive game. A lot of probes here. Earlier we got four probes. This time around, a lot of lost mining time and now maybe... Some barrow, on barrow, and now it's gonna fire, and that's okay. We are going to drop a Widowmine in the natural too, though. And that's when we get some single probe. So it's a good defense by Poppy, but also perfectly fine execution here by Vindicta. He deals a lot of indirect damage. <laughs> what he knew Clem 1 when he saw Clem was 0-2? Oh, yes, mate. Because I cracked the, I cracked the Matrix. I said it, I believed. A ah, great run by Elaser though, and obviously great showing. I didn't quite get to see the games in great detail, but quarterfinals is good. Ooh, is these with the mines right now permanently cloak? No, you cannot do that. <laughs> that was scary. Oh my goodness, I love the way that the burrow, 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 burrow. No, unfortunately, no burrow. Alright, Poppy feels that he can send it, but the missile turret makes it hard for these oracles to get close. And even the Colossus, I know it sounds silly, but Colossus I do need to respect missile turrets. Does no Terran unit fights as many times as Mr. Turret does. The Oracles just explode. A Widowmine explodes in the heart of the Protoss army. And this feels like a straight up terrible fight for Poppy. As the Marauder Count is still high. Vikings are doing their thing. We are going to display a little bit of Colossus Micro. But not even that really works out all that well. GG gets called. I mean great fight by Vindicta. But a bad fight there by Poppy. Uh, I just kind of felt that after a crazy amount of patience. We kind of lost our patience there. And maybe he just thought like, okay, your Viking count is low. I've got four Colossus, let's go. But the Missile Turret was freaking sick, man. I know it's weird hyping up a Missile Turret, but... <laughs> Look at this turret, guys. Look at it go. It's like, bam. It's gonna get the Observer. It's gonna get the Oracle. It's gonna get that. Got a couple shots over the Colossus. I mean, MVP turret. Turrets are sick. The game five will be played on the European server. So we had one of them, or both of them winning a game on the home server and both of them losing a game on the home server. And it's now time to hop into the game five. The winner of this series walks away with a hundred bucks. The loser of this series still gets $25. And after this guys, we've got one more best of five to wrap up another marathon day in the life of Roddy. And that will be Jumi against Namshar. 200 bucks on the line for that one, 150 for the winner. Turret shot like 18 times, yeah man. Nothing fires quicker than a turret besides a Stim Marine. Why does Terran get all the good stuff, you know? Alright, final round. It is 9 p.m. Who is gonna take it? Will it be Vindicta? Or will it be Poppy? I don't even know what you guys ended up voting for in the end, by the way. I saw in the beginning there were very few channel point predictions and maybe there were a few more towards the end. I don't know who settled for what. What I do know is that this is our final game of our co-main event of the evening. And we still have a main event. Final round. Fight! A great showing once more by this man. Definitely one of the favorites that I like to invite to the big brain bounce because he always puts on a great show. Unfortunately, he did not make it into the playoffs of the ESL Masters. That's why we got him here. Wanted to give him a little bit of extra love. And he is so far rewarding that with a great showing. Can he get the dub though? Can he steal it away? In enemy territory on the European server. 
San Diego's very own uh, Vindicta. And in the bottom left side of Arroyo Blood, we are looking at the main base of the man who's trying to keep the streak of the Polish Protoss nerds alive. Since Rodzin took out Cuckoo, it didn't just take him out, but he completely destroyed Cuckoo. And Art had a nil biter of a best of five against Baby Marine. Can Poppy also win for the peepees, the Polish Protosses? This is Poppy. I'm joking, by the way, guys. Cuckoo did have a great showing. <laughs> but if he's being mean to the old man, Cuckoo has to know that what comes around goes around. And I can fire away for days. And I can just use my platform to spread some fake news all day, every day. <laughs> but let's talk about all the losses of Cuckoo. And I would tell you guys that that is not meant for a single stream. That is not a one book kind of material. No, we're talking trilogies over here, okay? The amount of times that we watched Cuckoo and he let us down. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If it is ever my time to leave this earth, I truly hope that the funeral will be ran by Cuckoo. So he can let me down one final time. Because that is just a no. That is just the way that I got to know my boy from Romania. He is the very best at that. And I don't think anyone could do it better than he. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, guys, that day is very far away. And we can still just stick around together and enjoy some more video games. I'm not ready to say goodbye yet. As we have a couple of Marines and a double Reaper follow-up here for our men from the Platinum Heroes. What is this going to be? Is it like barracks into factory into two more barracks? Do we go for our Babylon build? What even happened on Babylon? This has been such a long best of five. I'm having a hard time remembering exactly how it played out. Obviously, uh, oh yeah, storms. Okay, never mind. I know now. <laughs> storms happened. It was a very stormy day. Tanks got crushed in the center and then Poppy just A moved to the other side of the map. With Archons, Immortals, Zealots, and one more storm. So, what is the opening here? It's Adept Stalker into Blink. First time around that we actually see Poppy just open up with very standard Stalkers and Blink here. I was just talking about how great you are, Kuku. That's all. Nothing to worry about, mate. As the Reapers will suicide into the natural, and three probes end up falling. That will be the end of the Reaper. If I was Poppy, I wouldn't be terribly upset by this. Uh, obviously, it sucks to lose three workers, but it's still two Reapers, and that obviously slows the Terran down a little as well. Reapers cost gas. It is a serious investment. So I think I can live with it from the proto side of things. Vindicta's also not going to be too sad about killing three probes. Uh, losing the Adept here for absolutely nothing. That is not too nice. I'm surprised by this build, by the way, guys. What is this exact build that I'm looking at? So we had a 1-1-1 one, one, one opening with two Reapers. Hmm. Hey, that tank is stuck now. Oh no, tank is stuck. Could be sick against Blink Stalkers. <laughs> that is a smart, a smart way to not worry about that. Everything that comes out of the starport flies and now the tank should actually be fine. <laughs> I like that. I don't know if it's because I have a Protoss brain, guys, but I would actually have not thought about that Swaparoo. <laughs> I've been like, oh man, that's annoying. I have to lift my buildings all the time. Obviously, uh, it's a pretty straightforward play, but I still like it. 39 SCVs on the side of Vindicta against the 45 probes on the side of Poppy, who's going for a very early Templar Archives. We have three bases, and we have a five-minute Templar Archives. The winner of the best of five gets 100 bucks. The loser still gets $25 for his efforts. That was the uh, awesome little best of five for these guys to play in. But you can't say it's not earned. Because with the way that these guys have been battling here, this really has been earned. earned. He also has a Pokemon balloon. Yeah, Pikachu is trying to leave. He's slowly but steady crawling closer and closer towards the door. 
I'll make sure that he's right next to me for the main event. <laughs> Got a, uh, a raven going on an adventurous mission. No shield by the ring the natural, so auditors have a lot of potential. Economically, it's obviously not that bad for Vindicta either. Is he going up to 5 Rex, by the way, guys? I don't totally know. Alright, here is our first auditor. He dropped it in a defensive spot. But it will still force all the probes to run away. Probes turn around. The Raven pretends to drop the second turret. Will not drop it at first. In the end, will still drop it. Can now actually get a whole bunch of probes. Not bad. Oh, Jesus. That scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, guys. But Jumi just really scared me. <laughs> Mate, actually my heart. I don't know what just happened, but that just scared the hell out of me. I'm used to, like, sometimes being, uh, if I play games and a Widowmind drop happens or a drop or a big explosion that it can scare me a little, I have never had a Whisper scare me. And for some reason that Whisper actually scared me. Alright. We have a third CC going down and barracks number four and five going down as well in the main base of Vindicta. So this game definitely does not need to end anytime soon. We are now escorting a, a medevac drop with a raven. Raven being the bodyguard is gonna... I guess just drop another third. Here comes the widow mine drop. There is a big army pretending or at least uh, potentially attacking the third base as well. The widow mines are perfect. Sweet baby Jesus. I mean, that auditor was a decoy. There is a storm here or two. And there we have two storms. Nice widow mine connection on the War Prism 2. Windicta on the European server here in game 5. Thought about dropping into the main base, but will not quite go for that. Oh, 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 poor Poppy, guys. Poppy kind of got bopped there. Now, Windicta did completely forget about his Raven. Actually, a unit that would have been amazing if he kept it alive. Poppy's supply block, too. After all of that, and it's a big one, guys. The 117 out of 117 with four pylons on the way. Yeah, that is a big one. That Raven had so much more potential. Imagine you just send it here to the bottom side of the map. It gathers up a bunch of energy. Big fights happen. All the turret in the main. All the turret in the natural would have been a nightmare for Poppy. To keep on dealing with that if you don't have a Stargate. Poppy now thinks that it's his time to be aggressive. Vindicta lost to Paddy Mac in that all these signs. Was it Paddy Mac in that? Oh, Jan Siege is no, not again. It happened in the ESL Masters NA playoffs. And once more, storms are very scary here, but he lands an EMP. He kills the War Prism as well. So now a scary fight goes into an amazing fight for Vindicta, and that will do it. Platinum Heroes Vindicta wins the co main event. Of the evening after a great attack on the third base, a raven in the main base, a widow might drop into the natural, and now a great hold. Man, I saw history just repeating itself all over again because it was less than a week ago that right there, that triangle base was the final fight for Vindicta and the ESL Masters NA. And I invited him tonight because I wanted him to get out of that and, you know, have a, a feel good moment. And get a smile back in his face when he's playing StarCraft. And he almost would have suffered a whole lot more pain on the exact same spot versus the same army. But this time around, we had Ghost. This time around, we sniped the Prism. And that was an awesome series. Very, very, very well done by both players. And yeah, gifting us five subbies, mate. You are literally carrying my channel, by the way. Gifting us five subs. Also gifted me 25 bucks earlier, guys. Make sure that you save some for yourself, my Eric. Because <laughs> I know you're a sweet man, but... <laughs> yeah. ESL who? This is where the best games are. <laughs> and the best cast to Rotip. <laughs> Thank you, matey. Thank you to Basilis for gifting us 10 more subbies as well. Really appreciate it, guys. We are on a roll. Uh, that was an amazing co-main event of the evening. Apparently, they didn't like the PvP before. <laughs> They're like, eh. The PvP didn't quite do it, buddy, but this PvT that went to distance, that's a sick one. It's a payday today, we're good. Well, treat yourself a little, mate. I love you, but I can't just have you supporting me. You're not alone. I'll make sure to uh, go 
get some Buffalo Wild Wings, mate. Get yourself a couple beers, cheeky whiskey, something else. All right, 52% of you guys believed that Vindicta was going to get the job done, and he did. Uh, and that means that we have one final prediction of the night, our main event of the evening for Jumi versus Namshar. Obviously, PVZ 6.3K. Let's call it 6.3K. For Jumi, Namshar. I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes to get your predictions in for our main event. The last time around, we had Jumi in the main event. Was it the main back then against Lambo? or was that co-main event? That was obviously a banger of a series. Uh, but yeah, for Jumi, it has not all been sunshine over the last few weeks. Uh, so we'll see how it goes today. Jumi says that was Kome. It was the main event in my heart, mate. All right, guys. I really need a couple minutes. I need to grab myself a drink. I need to grab myself a tiny snack. We'll run some ads. And uh, after that, we'll be back. We had two best of sevens, three best of fives. We have one more best of five to go. I'll see you guys soon.